Hello, everybody. Welcome back and thank you for joining the Moms Living a Life They Love Summit, where I am talking to so many incredible mamas who are doing both, having a successful career, raising a family, um, and also having some fun along the way. And today's guest is really, really special, guys. She is a mom. She is a teacher. She is the founder of Baby Einstein and the creator of um, her new company, We School, which we will definitely get to talking about. But Julie Clark, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I just have to tell you guys um, really quick. So I have always been a fan of Baby Einstein. I'm sure every mom watching is and knows about your product, but I didn't know that Julie lives in Colorado with me. So that was such a cool finding as I was looking for these expert moms um, to realize that she also lives here in Colorado with me. So that's pretty special. Awesome. So Julie, let's get right into it. So tell us a little bit about uh, your business and a little bit about your family. Sure. Um, so I am a mommy, although my babies are now 22 and 19, hard to believe. I, um, my, I have two businesses that I'm kind of famous for. The first one I'm really famous for, which is Baby Einstein. And um, as you suggested, was quite a wild success, pretty amazing. Um, and that really came about as a result of being a stay-at-home mom, but a former teacher. So um, I had been a, a teacher of high school English and art. And when I had my first child, I decided to stay home with her. Um, it was a personal thing. I feel very open to whatever any mommy wants to do, but that was something that was really important to me. And so I decided to be a stay-at-home mom, but um, I found, as a lot of parents do, particularly moms, because we tend to be the ones to stay home with our kids versus men staying home with their kids, um, I found that I was missing some of the, oh gosh, emotional, mental stimulation that I got as a teacher and in the workforce. And I would say that I really came out with the very best, best outcome, which is I was able to start a company while being a stay-at-home mom that really focused my um, interests on my kids and allowed me to create something that made a big difference to the rest of the world, which was Baby Einstein, which, as you know, but some others might not know, um, was a series of videos and books and um, ultimately toys and music that exposed really tiny kids to great content. So it was all about exposure to um, classical music and poetry and beautiful images and things that I found um, lacking in the world of children's entertainment. So that was wonderful and um, took a lot of my time, but allowed me to get, again, stay home with my kiddos. I have two daughters. And um, so in the five years that I owned Baby Einstein, created it, and ran it with my amazing husband and partner, um, Will, we um, just dealt with all kinds of crazy timing and success and, you know, workload unlike any I'd ever known before. Mm -hmm. And I know we're going to talk about balance, and that's where I really started thinking about the whole idea of balance in a way that I never had before. Um, and that's what Baby Einstein was about. We sold Baby Einstein five years after its inception. So I actually sold it 20 years ago this year, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, but in any case, um, it, it was a really wonderful thing. My new company is called We School, and it's We as in W-E-E -E, as in teeny tiny. So I'm back in the field of creating content for little tiny wee people. But I would say that this time around, it has been a far greater challenge because we live in a time that is so different than it was 20 years ago. When I started Baby Einstein, to give you an example, I did not have an email. I mean, like, I didn't even know what email was. That's like crazy, right? Talk about dating yourself. So um, we live in a time that's very, very different. And what I found is that so many parents are walking around, of course, 85% of new parents are carrying a computer in their pocket, right, in the form of a smartphone. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, how can I get really great information to parents in a way that I wasn't able to with Baby Einstein by using these smart devices. And so that's what WeSchool is all about. It's actually creating content for really tiny wee people. And it's also creating 
just gajillions uh, and, and just like piles and piles and piles of amazing content for parents to help parents be more engaged with their children, to play with their children in the right ways, to understand developmental milestones, and all of those really important things. So that's what I'm up to these days. I love that. So when you talked about um, after kind of creating Baby Einstein and things getting really successful really fast, how did you adjust with your partner and your kids to, um, you know, from being a stay-at-home mom to all of a sudden having all this stuff to do with work? How did you make that transition? Oh my gosh. I don't know if I've still really made that transition <laughs> 20 <laughs> years later. I have to say that I'm actually considering writing a book. I've been thinking about it for years and I accolades to anybody who writes a book because talk about a lot of work. I've only written children's books. Those are really easy. Um, I've been considering writing a book called Balance is a Lie <laughs> because, mm -hmm. because it's the truth. I mean, first of all, not to get on my women's feminist platform here, but how many men, right? How many men are ever asked that question? How did you balance your work and your family? Men are never asked that question. Only women are, right? It's ridiculous. It's crazy and unfair, but here we are. So um, I would say that balance is a lie and that what I learned is that no one is perfect and that it took me a long time and a lot of anxiety-ridden moments and hours and weeks and months and years to understand that um, I couldn't balance everything. And so what I found super helpful, I'm not sure I'm answering your question, I hope I am, but what I found super helpful was once I got to the point where I had enough success that I could hire somebody, which took about two years before we hired anybody at Baby Einstein, um, until I got to that point, I was really losing my mind. And then I became successful enough, I had enough money, that I could hire somebody to do a little bit of the work, right? I couldn't afford somebody to do a whole bunch of the work, but I could hire somebody to do the stuff that I didn't have time to do. And so I had to prioritize, I had to look and go, okay, what is in my life that's taking up all this time? Well, number one was my family and my kids. And then it was my work and my business and being creative and coming up with ideas and making videos and writing books. But the other thing that was a huge load on my time was laundry, cooking, you know, um, emptying the dishwasher, doing all those wonderful things that we love so much. Um, and so, of course, as I prioritized, I said, guess which one of those things I don't want to do? <laughs> it was definitely laundry. doing my laundry, <laughs> putting away the, the clean dishes from the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of it, a lot of what we deal with is just prioritizing, right? And deciding, look, you know, even if you can't afford that person, does it really matter if you don't have a beautifully clean closet? I mean, it's just allowing yourself to be able to make mistakes and know that you're doing a great job. Like whatever you're doing, just do what you can, the best that you can do, and let go of so much of that crap that we put on ourselves as women and that society puts on us as women. No one is perfect. So... Definitely. And so I mean, that's such an important message. I think that all of us need to hear is letting go of this ideal of being the perfect fill in the blank wife, mom, creator, employee. But how do you start to let go of some of those expectations that we innately and subconsciously have absorbed our whole lives as women? Boy, if I had the real answer to that, <laughs> I'd be in your, I'd be having your job I'd be talking to people about this, how <laughs> to fix it. Um, what has helped? What has helped you, you know, be able to ask for help and delegate some things and, you know, some of the things that I can hear that you've done. Um, I think what's helped a lot is talking to other women entrepreneurs because we know, we understand, even if you aren't starting a business, maybe you, um, you know, you work in an office or maybe you are a doctor or whatever you do, um, talking to other women in the same situation and realizing that we have been, we have been um, pushed into a corner as women who 
try to do all of these things. It is absolutely absurd. And again, it, it took me a long time. And it's still, look, there are days where I think, oh my God, I'm falling apart. I mean, I, I can't do this. What do I do at those times, I guess, is a good question. Um, here's an example. This is a really ridiculous example, but it's a good one. Um, I was supposed to get my hair cut yesterday, which is why it looks so beautiful today. Um, I was supposed to get my hair cut last night and um, got a call like an hour and a half ahead of time. And the woman who was going to cut my hair was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I have to cancel, la, la, la. And, you know, I'm going to have to reschedule. And I was so upset for about 35 seconds. And then I went, really? Like, this is what I'm really getting upset about? Like, it's like anything. It's like, I'm really getting upset that I can't get the laundry done today. I mean, it's sort of like trying to step back and give yourself a break and give yourself five minutes to sit in a corner and breathe and just go, it's okay. I mean, meditation, I have to be honest, meditation has been a huge part of my recovery, if you will, from being that perfectionist who um, thinks that I can do it all when I really can't. And I would highly recommend that to people. And I know, look, it's hard. It, it seems ridiculous to go, oh, I can't, I can't take five minutes. It's hard for me to sit in the corner for five minutes. Try to step back and go, it's five minutes, right? Or it's 10 minutes, or if you can get up to it, it's 20 minutes. And God knows when I'm meditating, I'm not truly meditating because, of course, all those crazy thoughts are still going into my mind um, about what um, I should be doing or could be doing. But give yourself a break. It's all I can say to tell you that no one is perfect. Whatever reality show you watch, whatever entrepreneur magazine you read, um, whatever you know, newscaster who seems to have it all that you see on television, they don't. Here's the secret. They, they aren't. They aren't perfect. They don't have it all. We all just do our best. And if you can look in the mirror at the end of the day and go, you know what? I did my best. It wasn't perfect. Made some mistakes. But I did the very best thing that I could do. And that's kind of the best way to live. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think taking a moment just to honor and acknowledge all that you are doing versus you know, you kind of think about and notice right away what we're not doing well enough. And, you know, the brain has evolved to do that. It wants to notice where we can be better and keep us safe and sense danger, but stop and pay attention to all of the wins that you want to celebrate for the day. Like the kids getting to school on time and yes. you sharing a creative idea or maybe you serving somebody in some way. I and mean, there's way more wins than there are things that you didn't do right. So mindfully paying attention to those. And you can even do that in your meditation. But I agree with you. Meditation is so helpful. It is. And I mean, finding it's really hard. I get it, especially when your kids are little, I think. It's really hard to give yourself a few minutes. It's so critical to give yourself a few minutes. And I'll tell you, like, I, when I had my second child and I was kind of in the midst of baby Einstein and I had a two and a half year old and a, a newborn at home who had a colic. I thought I was going to lose my mind. I mean, I really did. And for a time, it took antidepressants to get me off of that track. And, you know, that's another thing that we look at with a lot of shame. Society has kind of put us in this weird place where talking about those things or talking about postpartum or, you know, discussing the fact that it's really hard even to be a stay-at-home mom who's not working outside the home. In some ways, that's harder than working outside the home Ooh. because it's that incessant, I, I dread the word boredom, but come on. I mean, when you've got a tiny baby at home, it can be kind of boring. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why we all are like at the mall or we're at playgroup. Playgroup turns out really to be less for our kids than it is for us. <laughs> I think playgroup is for mommies, not children. <laughs> Absolutely. It keeps us connected. But yeah, like you said, stimulated. Yeah. And find, I mean, anytime you can find other women, I think women are amazing because we are willing to connect in ways that 
you know, women don't do with men and men don't do with men. I think that because we are, we are creatures of a different emotional bent for the most part, um, we are willing to connect in really important ways. And I would just encourage women to connect as much as possible. It's why I love doing stuff like this, just talking to women like you, because um, I think we're in the same boat, you know, and, and we have to support each other. Women who don't support each other, it just blow my mind. I just think here we are. I mean, we have the most important jobs in the world. Look at, look at raising children. I mean, is there anything more important than raising a healthy, happy child? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And yet, um, you know, we've got to get over the competition and the, the craziness that we put on ourselves. So, yeah. Yes, that's, I think that's such a beautiful message to hear is to reach out to your fellow sisters. I mean, somebody is going through exactly what you're going through. And I really appreciate that you touched on the stigma around mental health and asking for help if you are suffering with anxiety, depression, postpartum. Um, speak up. It's okay. It's okay to take medicine to help you um, get to a different place with that. It's okay to seek therapy. It's okay to be vulnerable with your girlfriends. Um, but you're not alone. You're not alone and, and you deserve the help. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said, I mean, the whole idea of balance is just, to me, it's such a, it's such an unfair word, right? I mean, you can't balance. Here's the reality. A funny story. I was waiting and waiting desperately, anxiously for this phone call. I had been told that um, Oprah, this was way back when, Oprah was considering doing a story on mom entrepreneurs and a producer was going to call me. And I was so geared up and so excited for that to happen. So I'm like literally waiting at the phone all day long. Meanwhile, my daughter falls off a chair, you know, and my phone is ringing and I have a, a crying, you know, 10 month old child who just fell off a chair. Well, of course my priority is my child, right? Mm -hmm. So you just have to go, okay, I can't do everything at once. Sometimes the, the scale is weighted this way, family and career, you know, not so much. Other times career is weighting the scale. It's so rare that it's like this. It's so rare. Mm -hmm. And you just have to go, that's okay. You know, that's all right. Absolutely. And so how has, as your children have gotten older, how has that changed this lack of balance is what we can call it, this attempt for balance? How yeah. has it shifted as your children have gotten older? It's been a lot easier. I'll tell you that. Um, you know, there's nothing like um, children under the age of about five to take up most of your time. <laughs> so, so now that they're grown up, and particularly now that they're out of the house, it's become so much easier. And I would say, I was actually listening to a podcast um, this morning, and there was a woman on who had just written a book, um, and she had done all this research on women who left the workforce for a while to stay home with their children when their children were little. And um, there's that really crazy time um, where you freak out about, am I going to be able to get back to work? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've, I've given up my career, say, for five years um, or eight years or two years, however long it is that you stay home with your child. And how am I going to get back into the workforce? And will I be on track? And it turns out that this data actually demonstrates that women who do take that time, so they're less worried about this whole balance thing that is required of us when we have little kids and we have a career. Those women who have taken the time, 78% of those women don't regret taking the time off work. So I will say that is pretty interesting. Um, and although I worked when my kids were little, as I said, I did still stay home. So I feel like a bit of a cheat because I was able to have both um, career and being a stay-at-home mom, whereas a lot of women don't have that option. And I, I think that's rough. I think that's harder than it was for me. Um, but, but my kids being away now, and even when they were in high school and middle school, gosh, it was just overall so much easier because you do have so much more time for yourself because God knows they don't want you to be in their life anymore at those ages. <laughs> You're begging to be in their life. You're like, hello, can I talk to you? Can I text you? Can, I, can we have dinner together? It's like a miracle to have a dinner with your 
you know, 17 year old daughter. So <laughs> yes, it's an accomplishment. It is right. Yes. And so maybe there's some moms that are stay home moms right now that are listening and they have an idea that they want to share with the world or a service that they want to provide or a book that they want to write, you know, because you did have the mom and you were, by the way, one of the first mompreneurs that hit it so big. So obviously you did something right, but what do you recommend they do? Where do they start? Um, beginning that journey of getting that service or that idea or that product out to the world while being right. a mommy of children. Right. It's hard. I'll tell you that um, I had the great good fortune of being married to somebody who is very entrepreneurial. And so when I came up with the idea for Baby Einstein um, and really kind of the idea germinated for a couple of several months um, before I even spoke it out loud. And then I spoke it out loud to my husband and he grabbed onto it and said, wow, this would be really cool. This is a good idea. And what I would say first and foremost to women and men actually is um, you want to surround yourself with people who are positive, who are optimistic, who believe in you, but also who are realistic. So there's, there's two interesting sides to that coin. So finding someone who believes in you. Um, you know, you need that because if you are not um, of a business mind, as I was not, I certainly don't have an MBA. I'm an English teacher from a state college in Michigan. Um, if you don't have that MBA background and you're not a business person, there's a lot of things you might not think about, right? So how do I finance this? What is the market like? What's my competition? Um, these are questions that are really important to ask yourself or have someone ask you who does have that kind of background. So I would say again, first and foremost, find somebody who believes in your idea, who supports you because you need cheerleaders because doing something like this on your own is really, really hard. Um, I don't think I could do it on my own. Um, some people can, but not me. Um, but finding a cheerleader, people who are positive and optimistic in your world is great. And then finding resources, people or could be books, could be online. Gosh, I mean, we live in a wonderful world of information now. So go online, search out the, the question, what are the top 10 things I need to think about when I'm thinking about starting a business? I'm sure there are a jillion articles like that. There's some wonderful women out there. There's a great lady, um, her name is Maria Bailey. She has a show called Mom Talk Radio, and she now has an MBA, which she got as a grown up, which I think is great. Um, and she particularly, you know, in particular talks to women mompreneurs, entrepreneurs. Find those people, reach out and ask questions, and then be um, open minded to hearing those answers because. I think, you know, it's, un, it's hard to say, but it's the reality. Sometimes your idea may not actually be feasible. Other times it could be the best idea in the whole wide world. But again, you have to be realistic and understand the right questions to ask yourself. Because starting a business, I will tell you this, is so much work. It's wonderful when it works out. A lot of businesses don't, but those that do, man, I mean, the rewards that you reap, not only um, hopefully financially, but just as a, as, a, um, as, a, as a citizen of the world, the rewards that you reap and the things that you learn are beyond um, your wildest imagination. I mean, I find myself in board meetings now and conversations with people saying things that I, God, I, I can't even believe it's me, the English student, you know, writing poetry in the back of the room is saying these things now, you know, it's pretty cool. So, um, but I guess my best advice would be, be realistic, be optimistic, but be realistic. I love it. And you definitely started alluding and talking about how being a mompreneur has changed your life and your family's life. But will you say a little bit more about um, how the launch of your businesses has affected who you are as a mom? Yeah, you know, here's what I would say. And I can say this now that my children are both, I have two girls, both in college. Um, and I say this with great pride and a bit of um, oh gosh, 
a bit of innocence in terms of I wasn't exactly sure what I was doing at the time, but it's worked out. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I were going for a walk the other day and we were talking about our girls. And I said, you know, sometimes I'm sorry that we didn't give our girls more responsibility around the house when they were little. So our kids didn't have a lot of chores, for example. Mm -hmm. um, they pretty much had a pretty great life. <laughs> which was pretty nice. And I loved being able to, bri to provide them with a really great life. For example, we, we've traveled like crazy. So um, we both, my, my husband and I both really were bitten by the travel bug when we were quite young. We've been with our kids to over 40 countries. We've been to every continent, including Antarctica with our kids. Wow. So we have had the most beautiful experiences seeing the world with our kids. Um, what our kids have witnessed in our family without us intentionally telling them this is that hard work pays off right so they have lived in a house they lived in a house for until they went to college at 18 they lived in a house with parents who worked really hard a lot of hours um, when you have a stay-at-home business as we did and do you are working all the time. Um, so it might be 10 o'clock at night and you're getting back on the computer and you're finishing your proposal or you're writing up your book that you were gonna write two days ago. You're just constantly working and you're also doing fun stuff. But I would say that we have kids now who kick ass. I mean, my girls both went to college on crazy amazing academic scholarships. They knew to work really hard in school. They work really hard in college. We have a daughter graduating this year who is, um, you know, looking for a job now, but has all kinds of, you know, fingers in the pie all over the place as she searches for the right opportunity for herself. We have another daughter who is, you know, minoring in Japanese, who is going to Japan next year to study. Um, you know, just, I would say that it, it, I have learned, I've always heard it, but I have seen firsthand that kids learn by example. And um, I'm really proud that the example that they had was one that has encouraged them to be really strong, independent, intelligent, independent women. So that's kind of what I've seen. It's been great. I love that. That's such a beautiful message too. Them learning hard work does pay off and commitment to things yeah. does pay off. Just by watching, you know, I mean, I, I frequently say it and I got, I mean, I say it all the time in my new company, um, kids learn by example. They learn by example. And I, and like I said, I mean, now as the parent of adult children, I see it in my kids. They saw this in their house. And while they weren't, um, you know, living a life where they had a jillion chores, and that's not that I'm against that. I, again, you know, probably should have given them more chores than I did. Um, they really did learn that hard work pays off. It's hot. So it's good. I love it. Well, you've shared, I think, a lot of really helpful tidbits and insights. But if you had to summarize into like one sentence or, you know, one kind of takeaway gem for maybe mamas out there that are thinking about going back to work or women in the professional world that are thinking about starting a family and how, you know, starting a family is going to affect their job, what would you leave them with today? Oh, I would say um, there's this really great quote, Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, um, every wall is a door. And I love that quote. I've actually got that hanging on my wall in my office. And um, I love it because it says to me that every obstacle is only an obstacle if you let it be so, right? That we have this wonderful... We live in a wonderful world. We've been born into, um, onto an earth, onto a planet where almost anything is possible if you work hard enough at it. And that you don't have to have a job outside the home to prove that. You can be a great stay-at-home parent and have that, working really hard to be a great stay-at-home parent. You might find it doing social work or teaching or you know what, just volunteering in your community. Every wall is a door though, everything is an opportunity. And um, it just all has to do with how you look at things. And so I would just say every obstacle, pay attention to, pay attention to how you look at it, 
how you treat it, and um, how it can work for you, how it can become a door rather than a wall. Mm. I don't know if that's like crazy philosophical or makes any sense at all to anybody, but that's oh. always a good thing for me to think about. No, I, I think that's perfect. You know, it's, um, there are no problems. There's only opportunities. So what is the yeah. opportunity here? And don't let what looks like a wall stop you from, you know, moving forward with your family and having another baby if you want one or releasing that product. Um, just really being mindful of what's the mindset around it. I think that's so, so helpful to remember. Perfect. I love the way you rephrase that. Thank you, Brooke. That was perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, I love We School, so I want to give you an opportunity yeah. to talk about your generous giveaway and just a little bit more about um, We School. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. It's always important. This is the other thing I'll tell you. When you have a new company and you, you know, do all this work to make something happen, Hard, sometimes the hardest thing is just making people aware of it. So thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Um, so WeSchool is an app. Right now it's iOS only, which means it's on Apple devices. Um, so if you have an iPhone or iPad, it's really readily available to you. Um, for your listeners, I am going to tell you this is a free app, a lifetime free app for you if you download it before June 1st. Um, after that, it's not expensive. It's only 99 cents a month. And what you get with that is this crazy, beautiful um, handful of things. So one thing you get is this milestone information on a month by month basis for the, your child's first three years of life from birth until they're three years old. What can you expect every month from your child from a developmental standpoint? It's all research based, gives you great ideas and tips on how to help your child achieve those milestones really wonderful what we call play plans, which are um, activities that you use with your child. It's all play-based. So basically ways to play with your child to help your child stay on track so that by the time they reach school, they're ready to be in school. Um, we also have this great little area where we have a four baby section, which includes links to beautiful books in the iBook store, so eBooks that are written by me, that are really interactive, super fun. Those are also free. Um, so please look for those books. You can find them on our website, which is www.weschool.com. And remember, it's we, like tiny, so W-E-E, school.com. Um, so books, videos, music for your baby, really great stuff, expert shopping tips. So you don't have to go to Toys R Us and freak out because you just see like miles and miles and miles of shelves of plastic toys. We literally give you links to the very best toys that help your child develop on track. Um, gorgeous wooden toys from companies like Melissa and Doug that we recommend. Um, just, I mean, thank you again for the opportunity to talk to people about it. I'm so excited. It, if you think about it in this way, if you know Baby Einstein, I would say it's sort of like Baby Einstein and steroids because it's not just stuff for babies anymore. It's actually stuff for parents as well and caregivers and grandparents and whoever's home with that kiddo um, every day. So really, really beautiful. I'm so proud of it and um, hope your listeners enjoy it. Thank you so much for that generous gift. And, you know, I've had an opportunity to play around with this app and it is so much fun and helpful information. This tool, if you haven't heard of it, share it with other mommies, share it with people that work with children. It's literally everything you would need to know for your kiddo um, or one that you care for to hit milestones, but it's interactive and it's fun and it's fresh and, um, I don't know, you should be really proud of that product. And I think a lot of moms are going to be grateful that you put that out into the world. So thank you, Julie, so much, not only for that, but for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us today about what it's like in real life to be a successful working mommy um, and also have some fun along the way. So we really appreciate you being with us today. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure. I really appreciate your time and, um, and your support. So thank you. And all these ladies who are listening, please remember, we are sisters in crime here. We've got to help each other. So thank you, Brooke, for what you do for women as well. I appreciate it very much. Awesome. Very good. Well, we'll talk real soon. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.